All right, guys, welcome back to Growth Minds. We have Alexi, Lexi Alfred today. Um, congrats again by getting your Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a, a long time coming. So it's official now. You're the youngest person in the world to have traveled to every single country. 196, I think? Yeah, 196, uh, according to me. There's a lot of different definitions of how many countries there are in the world. But oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so mine was the, the 193 countries in the UN, plus right. uh, Taiwan and Vatican City. Vatican and City. Uh, yeah. also, I personally recognized Palestine as well. But, gotcha. Yeah, so every country uh, by 21. And is it 193? That's like the UN. That's like what most people define it as, but you went. Yeah, the UN above and 193, and then 195. Some, things, yeah. some people think there's 205. It's. A bunch of different definitions. <laughs> gotcha. Well, it's yeah. official now, so congrats on that, by the way. Thank you so much. It took, uh, I technically finished at the end of May, and it's the end of, like, the beginning of December now. So. Oh, you just finished, like, six months ago. Yeah, so I technically I finished in, in May, but had to battle about it with Guinness World Records for the past six months. So, so what's that process like? Because I think everyone's curious. There's, like, yeah. a lot of people that have, like, records, I guess, but... I've never met anyone that has gone through the verification process, especially for traveling. Yeah, so this is actually one of the most complicated uh, Guinness World Records to prove. I had to mm. submit almost 7,000 pages of documentation wow. in chronological order. And I also started traveling uh, when I was really young. So yeah. I had to either figure out how I could prove uh, with all of the different evidence that's required uh, about those places or I had to go back uh, to them and there's like a huge list of evidence so I needed oh uh, passport stamps, visas, plane tickets, accommodation receipts, uh, any kind of taxi or any any kind of in, inward or outward journey from a country right. uh, needed to be documented as well as two witness statements from uh, two people I met in each country. <laughs> every country? Yeah, every country. So almost 400 signatures I had to had oh to get. And it's God. not an easy form to fill out. It asks for people's personal contact information. And a lot of the time I was approaching complete strangers in the streets <laughs> to help me <laughs> with this. Holy so crap. that always added a little bit more stress to my day. And what, but, what about the places that you visited when you were young? How did that, did you just have to go visit these places again? Yeah, so those places, if it was close to where I already was, if it was just like a day trip across the border, I would go back for the day and get some fresh evidence for it. Or right. uh, I was actually able, my family owns a travel agency, right. and I was actually able to find a shocking amount of uh documents from just how we uh, we backlog all of the, the trips and plane tickets that we book. So right. I was able to get away with a good amount nice. of them. But I, I ended up having to go back to maybe 30 countries or so, and something like that. How many did you travel to when you were young, I guess, with your I, parents? Uh, I traveled to uh, around 70 countries by the time I turned 18. Wow. Yeah, my, my family are uh, travel junkies. My mom started a travel agency when she was 19 years old. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I grew up, they would uh, pull me out of school and take me with them when they were working around the world. So Crazy, crazy. So you just gather all of this evidence, even I guess as you were traveling. So you must have had that mindset of going for the record at a certain point. What, what was that tipping point where like, oh, like I'm halfway there. Or yeah. something. Yeah, so I graduated from high school at 16. I got a degree from community college by the time I turned 18. And yeah. since I was around 12, I had been saving to take off a whole year from work and school to travel. Right. And two months into my gap year, I ended up counting for one reason or another how many countries I had been to in my whole life. And mm. that's when I got to to the number 72. And I thought to myself, wow, that, that's actually kind of unique. I wonder yeah. who's the youngest person to travel to every country. And that's when the light bulb went off on my head and <laughs> went off in my head and I, uh, I Googled uh, 
that for the first time and yeah. came up immediately with the Guinness World Record. And it was held by a man who was over 24 years old. 24, and okay. And it had never been held by a woman. Mm. So it was as if as soon as I saw this record on my phone, that you just I knew. was like, oh, no, I'm totally going to have to do this or I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life if wow. I don't try. You were 18 at that time. I was 18, yeah. So, you have so six years. Yeah, so I had I had six years. I had six years of savings, uh, and I was already a travel agent who who knew how to to book complex itineraries. Right. So it's like I had no excuses. You had everything in your tool belt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, just started kind of breaking the world down into regions. I had no idea right. what I was getting myself into at all. Crazy. Um, <laughs> ended up being a lot more complicated than I could have ever imagined. And your parents uh, were just like, "Go do it," or <laughs> Or were they like <laughs> when I first crazy? told them about it, they were like, oh, "Okay, good luck with that." Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. They never said, uh, "No, you're not going to be able to do that" or anything, because in a way, they had been preparing me my whole life for right. for something like this uh, with with all the places that they had brought me. Gotcha. So they knew that I was capable of doing it, especially on my own, because right. I already kind of dipped my toes in. Uh, every area of the world so gotcha gotcha pretty prepared <laughs> that's insane that's insane so then you you go out into this like journey so talk about how you prepared because a lot of people obviously want to travel but you've done it in a very focused uh kind of strategic way obviously to fulfill your goal but also to experience the world in a way that people dream of their entire lives but you did it before you were 21 you said yeah so 21 and a half is the is the record now but yeah so I didn't really know what I was doing I had gone on some backpacking trips but nothing too too serious up to that point yeah so I kind of just uh, I looked at the map highlighted all the countries that uh, I hadn't gone to yet and then started looking like where is the easiest place to go to first. Right. So I, I went to Central America and mm. backpacked down Central America and then went to South America and went to the countries that I hadn't been to there. Mm. And then uh, it took uh, two trips to finish up all of the kind of oddball countries in, in Europe. And like, oh, I'll go to Southeast Asia and in Asia and see how it goes over there. And mm. then it started getting a lot more <laughs> complicated uh, okay. with the South Pacific Islands and realizing that there's uh, 54 or 56 countries in Africa alone. Holy crap. <laughs> um, You're getting a lot done, at least, in that one continent. Yeah, I'm just realizing that there were so many countries that I had never even heard of before, yeah. uh, before doing this. So uh, just really one step at a time and starting starting small and starting with things that uh that were close and that i had experience with mm. and then that kind of just built the experiences built upon each other for you know how to navigate so many countries in a couple of months right. or how to start applying for visas and uh what that looks like and, and everything what's what's been like the hardest country for you so far talk about that experience yeah, so I would say that the country that was the most shocking for me was probably Yemen. Yemen. Uh, that was by f there was no other country that I uh, experienced that was on the same page of just a whole other whole other type of of world because right. they've had a, a civil war for the past four and a half five years, wow. and it's just devastated the the country and i had never seen so many people just walking around the streets with ak-47 oh and these ruins that were destroyed uh, these buildings that were destroyed by by airstrikes and people still figuring out how to live there and it felt like very out of my comfort zone i went uh alone with a <laughs> a, a man that i had never met i was his photographer for a book he was writing and this i was is how you're also making i was money, 19 right? years old yeah oh my god i was 19 i'd never been to anywhere like that i had never had to wear a hijab before or an abaya uh so and uh that's actually the only 
real time that I felt that I was in any physical danger. I, I woke up on in the middle of the night on our last night there to just the sounds of gunshots outside of our hotel. Oh and God. I just jumped out of bed and was immediately just adrenaline, had an adrenaline rush and looked out the window. And there were about 50 or so men congregated in the in the parking lot of our hotel, like blocking the exits and pushing each other around and yelling. And I had no, terrified. it was terrifying. And they yeah. were shooting off guns. I literally ducked in my hotel room. Like, what's, what is, I could hear voices outside. And even though I knew we were the only people staying in the hotel. Uh, and that was absolutely the most scared I've ever been in yeah. my life. And I, I, I called my contact in the country and he didn't answer because it was like two o'clock in the morning. So I just had to like wait it out <laughs> in oh my, my hotel room. What was it going until, through your mind? Just like, am I, I was looking for like where to hide. I didn't. You thought they were going to come up or yeah, something. Yeah, like if these people are going to kidnap me, they're probably just going to kill my friend. Like, what are they going to do with me? Jesus um, so I was so scared and like looking like, should I hide under the bed or in this like chest? Like it was just, I'd never even had those kind of thoughts before yeah. in my life. Uh, and then the uh, next morning I was, we were picked up by, by my uh, contact in the country and I asked him what had happened the night before. And he said to me, oh, that was just a wedding party. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were just celebrating it. I just completely misunderstood the oh culture and the context of what was happening. They just um, shoot guns at the wedding? Yeah. So they don't, they don't drink alcohol in, uh, in Yemen, so one of the ways that they celebrate is by shooting off their guns. I had oh no God. idea <laughs> about any of that. So uh, it was a really interesting learning lesson, though, that yeah. what can scare me so much is just a normal part of their, their culture. daily life. And it was just my uh, misunderstanding of, of their culture, not anything wrong with theirs. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So you're traveling all these countries, and how, how much time do you spend generally, on average, with each country when you're going out and traveling? Yeah, so it uh, it depends. Anywhere from three weeks to three days. Uh, okay. So I found that it's actually the least visited countries in the world that are the most expensive. Oh, <laughs> it's really? It's really counterintuitive. So huh. they, <laughs> like, a, like, for example... Three days in Afghanistan with yeah. the amount of security, uh, uh, the the twenty like the twenty four hour security compounds like hotels and having to have uh, a guide or two a driver and all of these different safety precautions yeah. costs about the same amount as backpacking for three weeks in Indonesia. Wow! Uh, it's so I self. Uh, funded this entire project so yeah. the amount of time that I uh, could stay in each country was pretty much based just upon my my budget and I had a goal so I wanted to stretch my own finances to yeah. to meet the end of it so that was yeah. kind of in my mind the past year or two and how much you can survive for in this in these crazy countries obviously <laughs> <laughs> yeah well actually I found that it's the places that were the told to fear the most that ended up being the most hospitable. Like in, in Yemen, we were cordially invited into multiple people's homes and they didn't like, they had nothing. These people had right. nothing in comparison to what we have here. And they were so ready to, to give and feed us and uh, let us stay with them and all of this, like so welcoming. And wow. that was one of the best takeaways that I had was that you really can't believe the stereotypes. You have to go mm. to these places yourself and create your own uh, opinion from from your experience Nice. There. That's what Dennis Rodman was just talking about. Yeah. This is about North Korea, so it's a little bit controversial. But <laughs> how did you communicate with these guys when you were there? Because they don't speak – do they speak English, some of them? Uh, so it – it depends. I <laughs> I only speak English, so my uh, my go-to 
thing when I go to a country where I know there's not going to be a lot of English speaking people is that I uh, ask my hotel or I find out uh, on social media or something uh, if there's any anyone that can take me around like a local I, right as soon as I land in a country I'm just on the lookout for a local that can, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. can help show me around so I find different local guides and people I met off of Instagram <laughs> a lot of the time Are you just like DM people yeah I would just oh, hit, damn. I would just say like hey I'm coming to this country <laughs> Does anybody know anyone there? And most of the time they did. I was shocked. Wow. I, I didn't even have a large reach at all. And I was still able to find people in almost every country. Well, I guess you got a good following now, but you're saying before I had it, you were just all like I didn't hit ten thousand followers until I had ten countries left. Uh, oh whoa. Total. So I actually gained <laughs> uh, over two hundred and fifty thousand followers uh, after I finished. No the way. record once it once people decided because nobody wants to write about somebody that you or share that traveled. story that's like trying to do something cool nobody right. cares until you're done it's unfortunate so but yeah it's the world that yeah, we live so in i had ba basically no following no media coverage at all uh, mm. while i was doing all of this i was completely on my own yeah uh, only so, you had that before i know it would have <laughs> made so my life easier. so much easier <laughs> but i really feel like i earned it <laughs> in no that kidding. way no kidding. but the social network is crazy how you can just tap in and find like you i believe that you're only a few degrees of separation between everyone that everyone you could every ever want to meet yeah what was the number it was like five or six isn't, isn't there like a term like six degrees connection or something like that yes yeah, like three uh huh? three degrees of separation Baker? or something like that six degrees yeah something like that um, it's totally true i put that to uh i put that to the the test while i was traveling worked for you yeah it's the same um so how did you go about traveling alone to each of these countries how did you deal with loneliness that was definitely one of the things that I struggled with the most. Yeah. I traveled to about 50 or so countries on my own. Right. Uh, I feel that solo travel is something that everyone should try at least once in their life. To right. uh, You learn so much about yourself. It does so many good things for your self-confidence and your independence. It's, it's, it's an essential part of being a human is learning how to be fine navigating somewhere that you're not familiar with on yep. your own. There's so many learning lessons there. Definitely. But it can get really, really lonely, uh, especially after a couple of months of just not, not speaking the language, not right. being around anyone you know. Uh, and I really struggled with that a lot, um, oh especially in like really isolate. I spent Valentine's Day in oh, no. uh, the middle of the South Pacific on this tiny island called Tuvalu, uh, where there's like, <laughs> very little population there at all no internet no phone can like no cell phone service no anything just completely alone you're just lying in bed <laughs> yeah it's just like oh no like walking around a beach just like, oh where man is everybody? <laughs> um, it's funny anyone to spend valentine's day with yeah literally it's probably what no i would have done <laughs> Um, but yeah, so loneliness was definitely uh, a struggle, but it yeah. taught me how amazing it is to find people to travel with and that mm. how uh, I learned how to appreciate uh, the time that you get to spend with people uh, that you you care about, who you have uh, similar beliefs and values. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's made me appreciate it a lot more than I I did before I took it for granted without even without even realizing <laughs> realizing it. Yeah, it's it's hard to explain unless you've been through it. So I mean, we were talking off Jay's uh, off the podcast about uh, so I dropped out of McGill actually in my last year, and I went through definitely not a similar experience. But I would visit first trip I did was to Buenos Aires, Argentina, mm -hmm. and I would travel up to like a new country so for the past. Five years or so, I've lived in a different city every three to four months or so. It was instead of like three days, I would do three months or so, and it's a similar experience where you you face a lot of loneliness, and you know that out of like this survival instinct, you have to be able to get to know someone really quickly and to be able to develop this connection or friendship. And I personally felt this this habit of like becoming really good at connecting with someone really quickly just because I knew that I was alone there. So 
you meet someone and you just connect right away. But after like a few countries or a few cities, you get into this habit of knowing that you're going to leave. So it was almost this relationship that was starting when you start the moment you start, you know, you're going to be leaving. And it was very hard a lot of times because you felt detached, detached from a lot of the relationships that you started, whether it's like friendship or not like an actual relationship. Is there something that you've dealt with that as well? Because you're going through like, yeah, you're, you're on steroids with that stuff. Yeah. You're three days instead of three <laughs> months, right? Especially when you, you meet someone that you really like or yeah. um, you get along with and like a really, you have a special connection, a special experience in that place. Uh, but there's an expiration date at the, at the end of it, which right. is always tough. And it was really distracting at times, but... Uh, Were you upfront about that? Oh, when yeah. You first, okay. Everyone knows. Everyone, <laughs> Every, knows. everyone knew that, uh, that I met, knew that I was leaving at some point. Wow. Um, so that was kind of just a part of uh, the situation that, that I was in, and I was not going to be able to be talked out of that <laughs> at right. all. Right, that was your priority. Uh, yeah, but I found um, social media to be actually really helpful with that because I could in some way stay connected with the people right. that I met. I now feel that I have this really awesome network of people mm. all around the world that yeah. if I ever find myself there again that uh that i'd be able to reconnect with them or find them again really easily and still you know know what they're up to or what they've been doing yeah uh, definitely. so i'm really grateful to be alive during a time that that's a possibility because there sure. were some people i met like I, I connected with this man in jordan that he was like a bedouin tribesman and what? had <laughs> You didn't have a phone. You didn't have a Facebook or an Instagram or anything. Like literally nothing. Maybe a friendster or something. Yeah. yeah. Just, he didn't like no connection to the outside world whatsoever. So when wow. I was saying goodbye, I knew that I was never going to see this person again. I'm never going to talk to him again. And it's like a really weird feeling of like. It's kind of refreshing finality. too, you know? Yeah, it was a little. Yeah, it was yeah. really, really uh, refreshing too. Uh, but it's been really cool to be able to you know, keep, keep in, in touch in a, in a, in that certain way with the people I met along right. the way, because you never know. I've met up with the most random people. I met that actually during that Valentine's day trip. To yeah. Tuvalu. Okay. I, uh, I met this woman randomly there. She was a kindergarten teacher from Chicago who oh, was wow. also trying to travel to every country. And we ended up going together to Fiji, Saudi Arabia, Chad, and Central African Republic together. No way. Because we just got along and we, we kept in we kept in touch over Messenger and... She had the same goals. Up, yeah, ended up relinking in like the most strange <laughs> areas of, of the world. So Wow. Yeah. Because of because of social media, I always feel like, oh, well, there's a chance I could see this person again if I really wanted to. Right, which that's is, true. Which is comforting. Yeah, I mean, you do you do need that connection for sure. I mean, it's it's especially dating. It's 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 so hard. I find even now because I'm still traveling. Are you still traveling a lot? By the way, I guess yeah, you are. right? Yeah. So I've taken a, a little bit of a break to to start my YouTube channel and yes. uh, to also just take a breather <laughs> yeah. plan because I have a really awesome list of the places that I want to go back to. Nice. So, nice. uh, yeah, I'm just kind of getting back into the planning mode of figuring out where I want to go next year. Yeah. Taking a little bit of a break. It's been gotcha. nice. And how do you deal with that with when it comes to, or how did you deal with it when it comes to like, I guess, personal relationships? Like a boyfriend or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> yeah, for me too. Uh, it's really still bad, bad for me now. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, like it's like no one wants to date you because they know you're leaving. No, you know? I had been in a long term kind of relationship before uh, I started this whole record thing. Beforehand, uh, okay. Yeah, so that completely <laughs> completely ruined that. I went yeah. through probably two or three like rough breakups throughout the whole time that I was traveling. I felt. Uh, pretty much undateable because of how determined I was to uh, finish my goal. I felt almost like selfish, like I can't put anybody else's needs in front of my own right. uh, because this is really important for me and my career and feeling fulfilled with my life and you're only going to be so young once. Uh, right. So it was really hard, definitely really hard. And I think that if you are someone 
that has like this massive project in their life or you know some like some dream that they're trying to fulfill or like a goal uh, the key with dating is to find someone who also has something that important mm. in their life so right. like a, a relationship where you know you're off doing all of these crazy things and you're super busy and then your significant other is just at home literally waiting for you to come back yeah and like that's, bored. Not that's never gonna that's work that's never gonna work it's yeah. never gonna work so you have to find somebody that's at that equal phase in their life where yep. they're busy too and they can't think about you all the time either so whenever you guys do have time to spend together that works but gotcha gotcha yeah <laughs> yeah and the thing about solo traveling i've noticed is obviously you're spending a lot of time alone together like by yourself and at first i was like a super extrovert and then I went through this 10 day meditation trip in Hawaii called the Pasana and that and like mixture of other experiences, it, it turned me into more of like an ambivert, which is like, like a, I think that means like it's you're both. And I realized like it's actually been healthy for me in the end as I've kind of start to settle down a little bit more. And because I think what most people, they get into this relationship because they're trying to fill this need or they're dependent on someone else being there for them during the relationship, just like you mentioned. Whereas I think the this benefit of solo traveling is you get so comfortable being yourself that when you when you are ready to enter a relationship, you're not you're not necessarily trying to fill a hole. You're trying to find someone that can make you better because you know that if they don't, you're completely okay being alone because you're just so used to it anyways. Um, so yeah, that's definitely another plus one if you want to solo yeah. travel. I mean, for sure. travel <laughs> in general just kind of uh, uh, it it makes you it forces you to grow as a yeah. as a person. So I think the more developed you you are on your own, the better that you're going to be in a relationship. Totally, uh, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Has that? Um, I mean, traveling all around the world though. What's your what's your relationship with travel now? Do you still look at it the same way? I'm definitely not the way most people look at it. So how do you personally look at travel and discovering new places? I or love that question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think that I am always going to have a bit of a endless love affair with travel. That was like my first love. Mm. Probably be my last love. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have just... It's been a part of my life since before I can even remember. I can't really imagine a life without without travel being at the forefront of it. It's always yeah. going to be the most important thing to me. I think <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's just uh, where I'm at right now. But um, I just feel like all of the most incredible moments I've had, uh, the most like painful but good learning lessons I've ever gone through. Um, really everything that I've needed to learn throughout my life has been taught in one way or another because of traveling. Right. Uh, so I feel that it's uh, pretty much the most effective catalyst for personal growth. Mm. Uh, and that's what I'm always trying to do is like learn, uh, learn and grow and, you know, become more connected right. in, uh, in the world that we live in. So travel has always been always been and will always be uh, the most important part, part of your life yeah and do you are you now trying to find different ways to travel are you maybe doing more long-term travel now instead of like a couple of days or yeah so yeah. I definitely want to start traveling uh, more deep uh, deep travel and spending you know slowing it down I've realized that I don't I don't like <laughs> hopping hopping around places uh, every couple of weeks. Yeah, it's tough. I'd rather way rather take it take it slow and kind of see where it naturally uh, takes me throughout a longer period of time. Yeah. Um, but I really feel like I almost got a like a sampler platter <laughs> of the whole world. Yeah. Um, got a little bit of a taste of everywhere, and I uh, would never want to. Um, change that experience because now I, I am thinking of all of these places that I would have never even thought to have gone if, right. if I hadn't have put myself in the situation of going to so many places for a short amount of time. 
Uh, so it really opened up my mind a lot. Right. What What are some of those top places for for people listening? That I, uh, yeah. Well, you don't want to give it away. Oh, I've got a, I've got a lot. No, I I want to inspire people to travel, encourage them to go, especially because. Uh, one of the biggest issues I saw around the world while I was traveling was over tourism. Mm. So there are these amazing places like Italy or Japan or Bali or something yeah. uh, that they're touristy for a reason because they're amazing. Right. <laughs> but uh, the, the amount of tourism is ruining the environment there. And it's also making all of the, the locals really jaded because of how many people come and just utilize their resources and, yeah. uh, you know, trash their homes and then just leave uh, without really contributing anything to the local economy or anything like that. So the thing that I really want to encourage people and show people, especially through my, like, the channels and the content that I put out, yeah. uh, is that there are so many awesome places that literally nobody is going to. Yeah. Like, so much untapped potential in the places you would never even think of. So one of the, the main areas of the world that's been uh, really capturing my <clears throat> attention is uh, Central Asia. Central Asia. Central Asia. There okay. is so much interesting stuff between Europe and the Asia that everybody thinks of, like China, like in between right. China the place and that nobody uh, looks Europe. At. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's like there's the the stands and um, places like Armenia and Georgia and mm. uh, um, Tajikistan and Kazakhstan, like all of these countries that there's very little like information about them, or there's very little people like on social media traveling to these places, but I, I'm yeah. digging through and seeing f even more photos and places that I didn't get to see while I was there right. uh, because they're, it's hard to get out to like the really, really cool spots. But uh, How, Why is it hard? It's because it's dangerous? Uh, I wouldn't say because it's dangerous, but because uh, it's just like <laughs> it's uh, it's not as obvious. Like the infrastructure for tourism isn't as developed as it would be in France or yeah. something like it's not as straightforward so that's yeah. kind of off-putting for people they don't necessarily want to put in a little bit more research but right. uh, the more you you look into the places that people aren't going you just find all of these hidden gems that's where the magic is really exactly right? and instead yeah. of fighting to be the like seven thousandth person to take a photo of the Eiffel Tower yeah. that day, you could have these serene mountains in Kyrgyzstan all to yourself. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so, yeah, people that's want really it easier wanna, for sure. Yeah, pay, um, my, pay attention to. No, I totally agree though. I so I live in Mexico City right now, and I'm I'm back and forth in LA, and my business partner was having like this music retreat in this place called San Pancho in Mexico. It's like an hour drive from Puerto Vallarta. It's called San Francisco, Nayarit. And population of like 2,000 people. And you get in there, nobody has like cell phones or anything like that. And everyone knows each other. So you can leave your bike unlocked and like no one's going to steal it because everybody knows each other's it's names. It's not what you think of when you think of traveling in Mexico. Definitely typically. not. <laughs> Definitely not. I mean, just Which is amazing. Media. That off the beaten path uh, kind of destination is my favorite favorite oh, yeah. thing to discover it was awesome feels like you're in on some secret that nobody knows about yet <laughs> totally yeah and like the people that were like the way they make money is all community driven as well so what would happen is the people like the mothers they would open up their house like their patio basically outside in front and they would set up chairs and they would just have like a little sign that says like dollar in pesos and they would just make a little extra of what they were making in their dinner for their children mm. and they would put it out to the people that live there and obviously people go there so it's like you're getting home cooked meal you're able to enter into someone's home and that's like the way their i guess small little economy works and it was just so refreshing for it's me it's amazing um, those are my favorite kind of travel memories and stories to tell yeah it's so much more memorable than like laying by a pool in some resort in cancun <laughs> yeah i mean it's not in stuff friendly i guess but it, you it know, can be though it, it really certainly can, can be, be. it's yeah. just not 
people don't think that immediately because there's not a ton of people doing it. Right. But it really can be. I see so many right. uh, travel vloggers and bloggers putting out genuine travel experiences and their mm. audience are loving it because oh, really? nobody's doing it. Huh. Yeah. It's yeah, like a real, really like interesting niche that's developing. I imagine, yeah. Because yeah. like a lot of these places are so traveled to that the thing about it is like I, I feel almost the, the, my instinct is not to take out my technology just because no one, ha stay in no the one has it. Yeah, too, you feel yeah. want to be present, but um, no, I can totally, I can totally see that. Um, yeah. Well, what's nice too about like taking out technology in that kind of environment is is that people aren't really used to it. So yeah. like when you're, you know, bombarding this uh, little village in Austria that has like a thousand people coming to it every day in tour buses to take right. photos of it, the locals are going to hate you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for stepping yeah. in their yard or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like when I was in Pakistan, Pakistan is really underdeveloped for tourism, but the mm. potential is unbelievable. Wow. It's like such a best kept secret it's going to be completely different in 10 years wow but what about it now is um it's just so be like the the natural beauty and when where i was going was these people are so friendly and they've never really been jaded towards foreign tourists before uh, they've never been really annoyed by them yet yeah not so yet. they're <laughs> so excited when you take out your camera they all want to like take photos with you oh, or wow. like have their photos taken they're like really excited uh, yeah, to just visit. like when you pull out a drone and start flying a drone around, you're gonna have like a crowd <laughs> like, of what? people. Don't take it over, oh no. No, they're like so excited because they've never right. really seen anything like it before. Like yeah, they're not yeah. they're not annoyed by it yet. So that's another perk of traveling to the lesser known areas. Is, yeah. You gotta uh, find the ones where they're yeah, they're not capturing jaded yet. it, it's actually a little bit more encouraged than mm. uh, than usual. Gotcha. Yeah, in the end, because you're helping them attract more tourists so you're actually yeah it helps their economy them. so much they're yeah. so grateful to i mean the huge tour companies in greece are right. <laughs> like kind of a monopoly i'm sure there's one or two people capitalizing on each of them but when you yeah. go to an underdeveloped country and you spend money on a local guide and then you eat at the local restaurants that that right. money that you're spending is going directly into their economy mm. uh, which i've always <laughs> really enjoyed spending my money in that way yeah really being able to see where it's where my money's actually going. going definitely definitely well i'd like to end it off with um i think there's a lot we can learn about some travel hacks or tips that you may have about how people can find low fares how people can get around what's been something that's been true to you since you've started traveling that's always been very useful as you find out new countries to play, to visit, and so forth. Yeah, so one thing that I have found uh, really interesting, and not a lot of people or companies will tell you it, is that you actually don't, everyone's looking for the, the secret or the hack to, or like what kind of you know luggage they can get or this camera they can get to make their experience of traveling like so much easier. Yeah. I would say my number one piece of advice is like, don't let any kind of material need for material possessions or anything like get in the way of you going out and traveling. Just don't yeah. let anything like slow you down from from just getting out there or like don't let anything hold you back because mm. you actually don't need anything <laughs> to get you out really don't, yeah. and travel. You really don't. You yeah. need maybe like a change of clothes kind right. of a thing, but you don't need like a new fancy camera or or like this certain type of skin moisturizer <laughs> to go and have like a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I really want to encourage people not to spend too much money on things that they don't need. Just go out and right. and try to find an authentic experience somewhere. Is there been, um, this sometimes I always ask is, is, is there a purchase that you made that's been, let's say less than a hundred dollars that has been really useful throughout your travels? Can you think of something like that? that anyone can just buy, mm. anyone listening? I'm just really, when it comes to travel, I'm a, I'm a minimalist. I, uh, I traveled to pretty much every country with only a carry-on uh, piece of luggage. So nice. I really don't think that there's like any one thing that you need to, other than, I mean, some kind of camera. 
just some way to capture it. it can be your phone it can be a little go like an old gopro yeah just some way to capture the experience that's like the only the only thing you need gotcha so just the idea is just bring less than you think yeah be, bring probably one way one, less one, one case. than you think yeah way less than you think <laughs> what's the least amount of things that you brought through your travels ah uh, i usually only travel with uh like four or five different combinations of of clothes i keep it really light really yeah. like basic simple never pack like a pair of heels or never pack anything that you're only going to use once right stay away from those yeah, yeah. so you do laundry like every couple of days i guess oh uh, yeah like every week or so yeah something like that and then just wash if i can't find a wash I, I would just wear it just do again. it in the sink yeah, I'll like wear it asians don't sweat that much so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just say keep it simple. Yeah, you really don't need anything fancy. Just uh, do it. In I my guess. experience, you can just get out and do it. You don't need any, you don't need anything. <laughs> love it, love it. Cool. Well, uh, where can people find you? What's something that you've got coming out? I know you got a YouTube channel that's coming out. Everyone should check out. Where can people find you online? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to find out more about my adventures, uh, you can check out my Instagram and YouTube yeah. and website all at Lexi Limitless. And I'm going, I just launched my YouTube channel. I'm really excited about this because I've been stockpiling footage from every country for years. Oh, nice. yeah, and I'm just going to be releasing it, uh, releasing it now. And also I'm developing a travel course called How to Travel. So nice. <laughs> uh, you can check that out for all of my in-depth uh, uh, tutorials and, and tips, tips around that. So, cool. And yeah. the course is just going to show people like where to find best countries, how to get the best prices and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to break down, there's going to be a, a basic half of it where I'm breaking down how to find flights, how to pack uh, efficiently, nice. uh, the kind of things that people want to know for their first first trips and then uh, a more advanced side of it of how to plan a 30 country trip or oh. how to get visas for really like getting complicated visas for yeah. uh, for hard to hard to get to countries like north korea stuff like yeah. that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i've learned i've learned a lot and yeah. i've made so many mistakes so i yeah. want to help people uh not make as many mistakes as I how do. many what are the methods you try to get in north korea i'm actually curious yeah, so I contacted every tour company that runs tours into North Korea. I looked into how to get in by boat, not the most legal way of getting yeah, that's <laughs> getting how they in escape, there. Usually. <laughs> uh, I uh, tried actually. Uh, my friends were trying from a huge, uh, really well-known news station uh, in the partnership with the Olympics. Uh, oh. They applied to the U.S. government to get a single-use passport for uh, journalists to go in to cover the uh, the North Korean marathon. Gotcha. And um, they yeah. wrote this whole, whole letter, spent maybe $20,000 on lawyers, uh, the letter <laughs> saying, uh, you know, sports connects us, is supposed to connect us all like we like this the story deserves to be covered and yeah the u.s still denied their denied their visas yeah. so it's, it's been absolutely impossible i've been told no so many times yeah. over and over again uh and then i found the uh, the JSA, the Joint Security Area in the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. Yeah. That was as close as I could get. Uh, I went there, tried the first time, was denied access, oh, civilian really? access that time. Flew all the way to South Korea for that to <sighs> literally be able to see <laughs> where I wanted to go, but and couldn't go not there. Could not get and there. then had to try again six months later when I was uh, told that it was reopening. <laughs> oh my god! So, and then I barely got it because they closed it again for uh, the, the some sort of meeting between um, Trump and and South Korea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> South and North Korea. So and they closed it right after I left. So. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, that was a really frustrating one. I would still I love to go and see that place for myself one and day. be able to share it with people. So one day, yeah, one day. <laughs> well, you can't say you don't know uh, that you haven't tried every single thing. So yeah, I learned a lot about North Korea in yeah. the process. So at least there's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lexi, thanks so much for being on and uh, check her out, guys, on YouTube, her course. And I think you've got a book coming out, right? Yeah. You're working yeah, on a book. All, it's all in the, in the process. It's all in the process. The course is going to be coming out first, though. Perfect. All right. Check Lexi out, guys. Thanks so much for being on. Thank you. <laughs> cool.